You know, I thought about waiting until St. Patrick's Day of next year to do this video. But I listened to this song again and was like, nah, this song is too good to not talk about it right now. Hello, hello, and welcome to The Music Moment, the video series where we talk about the best music from the past and the present. This is your host, your favorite man-child, Super Jesus Jackson. Today, we will be talking about one of John Mayer's early most overlooked gems, St. Patrick's Day. Weirdly enough, this was one of the first John Mayer tracks I ever listened to, if not the first, but man, it hooked me. It made me eventually listen to the rest of his material. Before we do begin, though, please make sure to hit the like button at the end if you enjoyed this video, dislike it if you didn't, or just subscribe because John Mayer. <laughs> so as you heard at the beginning of this video, the intro to this song is chillingly good. It is very warm and delicate, like a warm embrace on a cold day, which makes a lot of sense given the lyrics of the track. You know, nothing beats an acoustic intro to a song. Just the strumming of the song's chords, that's all you need sometimes. It really reminds me of uh, Radiohead's Nice Dream, another great track. It's one of those songs that you just put on and it immediately transports you to another universe. I don't know. So after this intro, we get the percussion, and man, is it sexy and intimate. Obviously, I have to say the word sexy while wearing a pink Nirvana shirt. It wouldn't work any other way, you know? John's melody, though, is brilliant. Brilliant. Here comes a cold Break out the winter clothes and find a love to call your own. As many of you know how I roll, I like to sing the melody of the track without any lyrics to see how great it is first. And this one, of course, passes the test. It's John Mayer. It has so much movement and storytelling. But because this is also a John Mayer track, the lyrics elevate the power of the melody. Here comes the cold, you enter you, your cheeks a shade of pink, and the rest of you in powder blue. Wow. Just wow. And that's just some of the first verse. <laughs> Let's talk about the chorus of this track. Melodically, it's wonderfully constructed. John Mayer is seriously one of the best songwriters. He knows how to tell a story with melody, and he has the perfect rise and fall. No. It moves around so elegantly, which brings me to another cool point. This song has a lot of chord changes, and I don't even know how to explain that efficiently, but from what I've read from other people, the chords change a lot, and you can hear this everywhere in the song. Seriously, we have comments like, the chords in this song, damn, how did he come up with that progression? Maybe I'm just too much of a freaking noob, but I find it really impressive. <laughs> hey man, I feel ya, I feel ya. And another comment like, 
This is just like, hey, I learned all these chords I never use. How about I put them all in one brilliantly constructed, lyrically clever, witty, but also emotional and personal song with a sound world that melds perfectly with the subject matter, then put it as the last track on Room for Squares as just a rare tune. Skills. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better, man. That bridge, though... Only John Mayer could do a bridge like this, his falsetto melody nearing the climax of the bridge, only to continue it as the bridge reaches its climax? Damn. The chords around all that are wonderful, too. So what is this song about? I think all of you may know, especially you hardcore John Mayer fans, but, you know, I still have to do the video, so. I mean, this is where shit gets real for me. John Mayer hits you where it hurts the most, and he completely lays it all out on the table. This song is completely calling out the cynical behavior in human beings when it comes to how they get into and get out of relationships. And it's something that we are all aware of when we do it, but at the same time, it's not something we think about thoroughly. I'm going to ask you something. Have you ever been with someone and you get to wintertime, right? You naturally get closer than ever to this person. As the months pass by, though, you know, winter passes by, and as you get closer and closer to springtime, you might notice or pay more attention to the issues of the relationship. And depending on the relationship, you might be doing it genuinely or purposefully, but that's the general behavior, right? And it's all a mixture of nature and nurture. We don't like the cold. Human beings all came from heat originally. We like day better than night. That's just how we are all biologically wired, at least for the most part. But there's also just human subjectivity and culture and cynicism. We have our best holidays in the colder months of the year because that's when we want more warmth and togetherness. And let's be honest, who the hell wants to break up with someone in the wintertime? <laughs> no one. Absolutely no one. You'll break up with them as you get closer and closer to summer because summer is the more open and fun time of the year where you explore and are a little bit more reckless. You know, it's single mingle time. That just sounded weird. I just love how John Mayer fully calls all of this out by making a song about it. But he tackled something so universal and so relatable that we all can't help but just sing along with him. That's just the truth. Here comes the cold. Break out the winter clothes and find a love to call your own. In the pre-chorus, he says, who knows what will be, but I'll make you this guarantee. Basically just admitting, look, I don't know what will happen between us, but I know for damn sure this relationship won't end anytime soon. In the dark, on the phone, you tell me the names of your brothers and your favorite colors. I'm learning you. I love, love this line. There is nothing, absolutely nothing like getting to know someone for the first time. The high, the dopamine that comes from that is exhilarating. And it's even better when it's winter time. It's cold and dark, but you're getting to know this person and it's the warmth you need to get through it all. And really, it's when you care the most about all these menial matters, because all you really want is just someone to get through the winter with. It's also kind of like the honeymoon phase. Even though it's cynical and you don't care about it, it's still beautiful. I mean, you care to ask about the person's favorite color, their family, their hobbies, etc. It's all nice. It's the stuff you need to keep caring about if you really love that person, regardless of what month of the year it is. And the chorus is lyrically genius. No way November will see our goodbye. When it comes to December, it's obvious why. No one wants to be alone at Christmas time. And come January, we are frozen inside making new resolutions a hundred times. February, won't you be my valentine? And we'll both be safe till St. Patrick's Day. It's pretty self-explanatory, and it's also bars. I love the It's obvious why 
That na -ni -na -ni -na. right there. Oh, it's so good. Just with the chords, it's all beautiful. I also love how Mayer purposefully is my best guess, pronounces the the month February, February, Feb. I can't even fucking do it. <laughs> God damn it. He says February. Yeah. February, won't you be my Valentine? <laughs> February. But you know, he could have said February, which I think is how most people say it, right? Right? I don't fucking know. I like the pronunciation February. I like it. It's cool. It's different. It's cute. Okay, God. The bridge lyrics are wonderful too, specifically in the way John Mayer advances the narrative and the meaning of the track even further. We should take a ride tonight around the town and look around at all the beautiful houses which is something that we all do during Christmas time, right? You get with the family and look at the decorations of other people's houses. Something in the way that blue lights on a black night can make you feel more. So firstly, I like how he references the color blue like he did in the first verse of the song. In this case, it's a reference to blue Christmas lights. The blue representing love and warmth and the black representing darkness and solace. I love how he basically admits that a relationship in wintertime, even if it's not the best relationship, can seem like it is. Because it's wintertime. What else are you gonna do? You don't wanna be by yourself, freezing in the cold, right? And then he follows it with, everybody, it seems to me, just wants to be just like you and me. And it's true, John. It's true. I will also say that, of course, there are many interpretations you can take. Personally, sometimes I look at it in the lens of wintertime representing the hard and bumpy moments of a relationship, and springtime represent the complete opposite moments, the most blissful of moments. So in the wintertime, that's when my partner and I need to be closer than ever, so we can get through the hard moments and be able to get back to springtime. And also, just accepting that the winter holidays are the best time to make things right again. It's easier to love when there are pretty blue lights everywhere to look at. And if you can strengthen the love you have with someone during the coldest and darkest times of the year, then you can rest assured you will be stronger than ever come St. Patrick's Day. If I always it's all that we gave and we someday take that away. I'll be alright if it was just till St. Patrick's Day.